Hello, welcome to this introductory video on the cutter node. This is going to go over some of the basics of the cutter and the inverse cutter. First of all, what is a cutter? A cutter is like taking a shape or a piece of paper and just cutting a section out of it, cutting the corner off that you need. Except we don't have to do that with the object. We can make another shape cut into the object and create that illusion, for example. We have a circle and a square, and if we create a cutter and plug it into the square, and then cut into the square using our circle, we can move our circle on top of the square. What is this doing? If you notice, if we unplug the cutter, grab the circle, and try and move it back and forth in Z depth, it will go behind the square and in front of the square. They both exist, they're just being placed on top of one another. What the cutter is doing is, cutting the circle away from the square. Now, if we try and push forward and back, it won't do anything because the shape is being cut. We can see this more clearly if we unplug the circle. The circle shape is still here, cutting into the object, but the actual visual circle that we see is no longer plugged in. So we can cut a slice out of this object. We can also go to the mask on the cutter node and double click it to make an inverse cut. That means that the object is now within the circle. It's only visible while the circle is in front of it. What is useful about a cutter? If we imagine this square as a mount and this circle as a face, we want to cut in to the face like a Pac-Man mount. We can apply a cutter on the circle, cut it, by the square and then unplug the square. So now we have a mouth shape and you want this line on the exterior to be solid rather than this chunk being taken out. You can plug the square back in but only by its line. Apply a cutter to the line, invert it and then plug the circle in. Cutters are probably the most important thing when it comes to rigging, as it means that we can basically do anything. We can cut hair against each other, we can cut the upper arm to the lower arm to the wrist, to the legs, to the body. It's going to be plugged into near enough everything that we do. It's important to remember that whatever the cutter is plugged into is the thing being cut. So if you're trying to do something and it's doing the opposite of what you want. Just with this, say you want the square cut into the circle rather than the circle cut into the square. The cutter goes into the thing being cut. You don't need to cut the whole object into the second object. You can do the individual layers of it. So for example, the circle, if we go to the drawing, you see we have a line and we have a color. If we create a line art node, plug it in and cut into the cutter, we can now move the object over and only the line is cutting through the object, even if it's behind the object. In saying that, let's get into some of the groups we can make with a cutter to make it more practical. So the first one is called an auto patch. You can connect an auto patch between the objects. So if we move the objects on top of each other, we now see that the line is the only thing getting cut and both objects are morphing into one another. What is an auto patch? A auto patch is a line node and a color node and a cutter with the color going into a cutter and the line cutting the color. This is exactly the same as this. If you notice, if we get rid of the auto patch and only plug a color in, you'll have this half line effect happen. That is because the color on an object doesn't end where the line begins, it ends halfway into the line. We can see this if we turn our color transparent. This is because when you make a line, it starts off at the origin point of the center and everything that you see come out of it is more of an illusion created by the program. It's not the actual center of the line. What a auto patch does, like so, is 
cut the color by the line. So the fake line that we're being shown is cutting in to the shape of the color. If we unplug the line, we can see. So when we plug a auto patch in and use that to cut instead, it's cutting by the color. So you don't get that half line anymore. What is the difference between using the auto patch node and using your own auto patch that you created? If we group this and call it a patch, now we have these two things that are practically identical. So we're going to create a cutter, plug it into the circle and cut it by the square and inverse. Perfectly fine. If we plug into a auto patch, now have it auto patching, the, the correct object still works. But if you are working at a place or even you like organizing, so the drawing pegs and the formers are all in one group and then they leave, go into a second group and that's where all the wiring is. If you have those, go into composites in those second groups. These composites are called square and circle. So now we have them going into composites. We want to plug the square composite into the auto patch now, and it won't work because something about the composite breaks the connection between the drawing and the auto patch node. This is solved if you remove the auto patch node and plug in your own patch. Boom. The difference between using these two patches is if you're plugging in directly from the drawing, you can use the default node, or if you're plugging in from a composite, you can use the group. Some very important nodes we can make with this is if we get an auto patch, and we make a line, a color, and an overlay. Plug the line into a cutter, plug each of these into a composite, and then use the auto patch to cut the line. Now we have this assortment of nodes. Whatever object is visible gets plugged into the left, and whatever object is cutting gets plugged into the right. And if we group these, so if we take this group and call it something like a weld, and plug the object you want into the left port, and the object that's cutting into the right port, unplug the main object, and then we copy and paste it and do the exact same for the other object. So this is going to go into the left and the thing that's going to be cutting it is going to go into the right. So now we have this weld, like you would weld a physical object. So they have a perfect cut. I've created this arm shape with a lower and an upper arm. If you grab the lower arm and try and rotate it, we have a perfect rotation like so. But we want this section to cut away like a real arm. We take our line weld, plug the object into the left and what's ever cutting it into the right. Now we've got this U-bend shape. We don't want the arm to merge into itself as we lift it up. So what we do is we take the line, we copy it, we move it to the overlay and we remove where we want the arm crease to be in. If we do this on both sides, now we have an arm joint or a leg joint. And if we push it in Z depth, we've got the arm facing away. If we push it forward, we've got the arm facing forward. One very common issue that you'll run into with rigging, animating, comping, pretty much anything when it comes to rigging is using an auto patch looks fine in the OpenGL view. But when you go into the render view, if you notice, there's this line, which is the color, the green behind the shape showing true. That's called anti-aliasing, a very easy way to get around this if you know the object isn't going to be being pushed forward and backwards independent of one another is get rid of the other patch create a line and a color plug the color in plug the line in but put it in front of the other object the line will be in front the color will be behind and cut the object by the color anti-aliasing is gone because it's not being cut by the full object it's being cut by the color and the line is hiding it. You can also make one of the previous groups in the same way. We take the weld that we made previously. We go into the weld and take only the left section, the overlay and the line add over. And then we plug a new object in by holding Alt. Plugging it in front of the color at and behind the line at like we done previous. Plugging the cutter into that, cutting it by the color at. And invert cut the cutter. 
we've got this new weld group that we can plug in. Whatever we want to be visible goes into the left, and whatever we want to be cut goes into the right, and we plug it in. And now we have the same solution, just as a group, so we can reuse. Just be sure to give each of these a different name so you don't get the groups mixed up. You can stack cutters on top of each other in different degrees. You can cut an inverse curl and then cut again. So we have a triangle, a circle, and a square. If we make a inverse cutter, plug it into the circle, plug the square into the cutter. So now the circle is inside the square. We can also do the same thing for the triangle. If we want the triangle to entirely be within the square, like the circle, but if we just want the triangle to be inside the circle, we can cut it by the original cutter. So now it's an object within an object within an object. This can be useful for stuff like if you have an eye and a pupil and then a shine and then the head, the eyes will be cut by the head, the eye shape will cut into the pupil. You'll have cutters going into cutters. Don't do this too much because the more cutters going into cutters, the heavier it will be. A second thing to look out for is if you have multiple objects being welded into one another. If we have the square go into the circle, then into the triangle, then we have the circle go into the square, but we also want it to go into the triangle. We're out of slots. So what we can do is hold Alt, hover over the group, it'll make a new entrance, and then we can plug that into its own line weld. But the issue with doing this is, so the issue now is the circle has a auto patch in this group and it has an auto patch in this group. So for each shape, you're going to have a new auto patch that's going to get very heavy and doesn't really make sense to do. An alternative solution is to create a composite, plug it in, and then that's where you plug in your multiple objects. Or what I prefer to do is make the auto patch outside of the group and remove the auto patch inside of the group. So now this one auto patch can go in to each of the opposing groups. That covers the basics of cutters. At least everything we need to know moving on to the next few videos. Cutters was one of those things that took me a really long time to figure out even though it's extremely simple once you get used to it just figuring out what goes into what takes a long time and even now if you're coming across an issue where a line is appearing somewhere where it shouldn't be you're still trying to figure out i don't know what should be cutting into what i'm just going to start plugging random stuff in and see what works that tends to be the solution 90 percent of the time but you'll get used to it Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. See you next time.